And then in really broken English, he's like, where are you from? And I'm like, I'm like, dude, I, I know my Arabic's not that bad at this point. Like, you know, don't, please just like, just like let me off the train. So I guess, yeah, this story, I think this is like wrapped up in kind of like process of my time overseas where God taught me more and more of what it meant to be led by the spirit and ministry work. And so <clears throat> I think like in the past, I always thought being led by the spirit meant like I would come out of my apartment and I would just be like on fire for God and my heart would be burning and like God would be like, you know, these are the people that you're going to talk to today. But yeah, I just started to realize that being led by the spirit really did just mean like I would just start my morning just trying to be in the Lord's presence and then just have this openness to him afterwards. I was like, Lord, whatever you're doing to build your kingdom in this place today, like, let me be a part of that. Uh, one time that I just really saw this really clearly is I woke up at like probably like 5 a.m. or something because that's when the, the Muslim call to prayer would go off. And so, you know, you wake up kind of just being jolted out of sleep, just very aware that you are, you're not living in a Christian country. You're not where you're, you're, you're normally comfortable. And so that can be kind of jarring some days. And I just remember like, I'm sitting with the Lord that morning and like, I'm just already grouchy, you know, and like, just already tired. And, and, you know, I'm just like slugging through the heat to the subway station and I'm in the subway station and, uh, you know, it's crowded that day. And you're just like, your nose is in some dude's armpit that you don't even know. And it's just like, you know, it's just one of those days where it's like, you know, this is, there are days overseas where it's just not fun, it's not an adventure, it's just sweaty and and you're just like, man, like, what is what is life today? And, and so that was one of those days, like I wasn't feeling like a super missionary, like I was barely feeling human. My stop's coming up and so there's this phrase that you use in, in Arabic uh, where I was at uh, to signal that your stop is coming. You say, like, you know, like I'm, I'm getting off soon. And, and the guys in front of you uh, would usually kind of like start to clear a path and everybody would queue up at the door and you'd be good to go. And so I, I said I said the phrase and I'd, I'd been in the country for like over a year at this point. And the guy in the way kind of looks at me and he doesn't move. And so I say it again. And then in really broken English, he's like, where are you from? And I'm like, I'm like, dude, I, I know my Arabic's not that bad at this point. Like, you know, don't please just like, just like let me off the train. And so the doors open and I like, you know, kind of brush past the guy anyways. And I'm not like looking to like practice English this day, you know. And uh, as soon as I get off the train, I kind of feel the Lord convict me. And he's like, David, that guy obviously wasn't from here. And I'm like, ah, you're right, Lord. And I was like, I tell you what, Lord, like if I see him again, I'll talk to him. And then I put my head down <laughs> and start like walking up the steps, you know. And then as I'm walking up the steps with my my you know, staring at my feet um, so that I don't see this guy. I feel somebody come up next to me and it's like walking right next to me. And so I look up and I, I look to my side and, and sure enough, it's that same guy. And so I'm just like, I start to talk to him in Arabic. I'm just like, hey, like, how you doing? And, you know, and so I ask him like, oh, where are you from? And it turns out he's from the same country as the refugee population that I was serving in the city. And so he was actually a refugee from that, that country as well. And so I was just like, I was like, oh, well, you know, I really, I really love your country and the people that are from it are just really kind. Like, why don't we, why don't we get coffee? And so I, I scheduled like a coffee appointment with him and we met up a few days later at a, at a cafe and we were just sitting there talking and, and he, he found out I was, I was a Christian and starting to say like how, how interesting he thought Christians were and, and, and how much he wanted to, to read the Injil, which is what they call the Bible in, in, uh, in Muslim context. And so, I said, huh, that's interesting. And so then we met up again and, and I had brought him a Bible. And so I said, hey, if, if I gave you a Bible, would you read it? And he says, yeah. And so I, I got the Bible out of out of my bag and I gave it to him. And to this day, I've still never seen anybody so excited to get a Bible. Like he almost jumped out of his chair and he's just like, David, like, like this is amazing. You have no idea. He's like, I've been searching bookstores in this city for, for days and days trying to find the Injil and I haven't been able to find it, but now you've given me one. He said, this is the best gift ever. And yeah, and that was just like this really, really, cool thing that I didn't, I didn't plan that, I didn't design it. It literally fell into my, my lap on a day that I was probably the worst missionary ever. I think the thing I just always try to tell people, it's, it's less and less about, are you doing the right strategies? Though there is, it is important to have a good framework for what you're trying to do. Um, but the biggest thing is to, to really just be abiding with the Lord and, and making yourself available to Him. And yeah, sometimes just crazy stuff like that happens.